Right, let's have a look at a quick distinction between bases and alkalis. And we're going to do this in the form of a Venn diagram uh, because I think it's quite helpful for our conceptual understanding. So let's start off with bases. That's my big outer circle. And depending on what level of chemistry you are studying, uh, bases might have uh, some slightly different definitions. At the most basic level, we might take some observations such as they taste bitter, they react with acids, they turn red litmus paper blue. And if you're studying at a slightly higher level, you might see definitions based around them being proton acceptors or electron pair donors. So let's take five common examples of bases. Let's take uh, copper oxide, perhaps zinc hydroxide, maybe potassium oxide. Uh, we've got sodium hydroxide. And let's look at ammonia as well. Now these five are all bases because they fit the definitions that we've just mentioned. However, you'll notice the three on the right uh, have been written in a slightly different colour. And that's because there's one further layer of classification we can add. These three bases in pink are actually all soluble in water. So if I have a base that is soluble in water, we can call those alkalis. Now, looking at my Venn diagram here, I can see that the alkalis circle is within the bases circle, which means that all alkalis are also bases. However, the opposite is not true. Copper oxide and zinc hydroxide are both bases, but because they do not dissolve in water, they are insoluble in water, they are not considered alkalis. And that's pretty much it for the distinction. We just need to know that alkalis are soluble bases, uh, which means that some bases can also be called alkalis. Hopefully that was of some help.